Shlam Alochon. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Rain Hanna, and I am the Director of Community Relations here at the Assyrian Universal Alliance Foundation. On behalf of our Board of Directors, it is my great pleasure to welcome you to our revitalized community center. Please know that we appreciate your support as we turn a new page for our organization. Since its establishment in 1978, AUAF has provided leadership to ensure the advancement of the Assyrian community worldwide and has played a central role in the social and educational well-being of the Assyrian community in Illinois and around the world. At AUAF, we believe in promoting positive engagement um, through art, education, and humanitarian projects and remain rooted in our founding principles. AUAF's mission reflects the complex nature of the work that our team is engaged on in a daily basis and highlights the emphasis that AUAF places on future generations of Assyrians. Since moving to our new location, we have been able to make incredible strides that have brought us closer to our vision of a stronger, more connected community. And though it has not been an easy road, it has certainly been rewarding. And without further ado, I would like to introduce to you someone who was around in AUAF's early days and has seen firsthand the evolution of the organization, Mr. Tiglet Ashurian. Mr. Ashurian currently serves on our board of directors and is the chair of our Cultural Affairs Committee. Please join me in welcoming Mr. Ashurian. Thank you very much, Irene for that wonderful uh, introduction. Shlam alochun. Kilib shena ti itun al shatistit khuyale ti wilayi otoraya al da beta khata gandrun kha gandrun kha morduta otoreta gyuda hamdita. Sabib itlan nashi arkhi qad leham zimi li shana diyan bi pa khalta bitlabim psasa min nukhun qad shoqitun li ham zimi bli shana di English qad kulli parmi. Ina hal beta bedaitun qad akhna libban u khayyutan ila qa li shanan u qa morduta otoreta. Basi min raba. My friends, thank you very much for, for everyone to be here. It's a pleasure on behalf of the board of directors of uh, AUAF um, and as the chairman of the cultural committee, allow me to welcome you here and it's a pleasure to see your wonderful faces here. And um, in Assyrian, I kind of explained, I said for those who do not speak Assyrian, I would, speak, I would be speaking in English. For the guests who do not speak Assyrian, may I highly recommend that you start taking some classes because <laughs> Because as the Lord said, because this is the language that the Lord spoke, Aramaic. So we know that this is the language spoken in heaven. So if you want to be able to communicate with the Lord in heaven, you better learn Assyrian now. <laughs> I only said that half kiddingly. All right. Uh, so. <laughs> But it's wonderful, and it's wonderful to see, uh, uh, you know, family, Helen Shorten's family, the legacy that, uh, that she has left behind. And indeed, this is who we are about. Just to give you a very brief uh, summation, because I only have a few minutes, I just wanted to let you know the, the origins of AUAF as, a, as an organization, as a humanitarian organization, goes back to mid-70s. Because following the, um, uh, the, the civil war in Iraq, um, thousands of Assyrian refugees came to Iran and went to Lebanon and some of the other countries, just sadly in a way that it is now. And, um, and these refugees eventually were brought into the United States of America, but they were struggling. The, uh, the, the period for adjusting to a new life, to a new country, to a brand new culture was very difficult. So the idea of AUAF as a humanitarian organization came into being where uh, through the help of the U.S. government, um, funds were provided to resettle these refugees in the communities that could become eventually viable communities. And that's why AUAF as an organization came into being to help these refugees. But soon after that, after a few years and after the flow of refugees abated, um, AUAF was left with nothing more than just a little logo and a name. Until the Lord opened the door for a benefactor and a wonderful person and someone that I will always remember till the day I die, Helen Schwarten came on the scene. And with Helen, a new chapter was born for AUAF because Helen, for those of you who remember her, um, was a wonderful person. She had a wonderful sense of community. She had a wonderful sense of helping people. So she saw the potential that at that time nobody saw. Nobody saw. 
So Helen came, and uh, um, 7055 North Clark Street, our old building, uh, that was something that Helen had gifted to the organization. And for many years, the organization survived because of Helen and her generosity and her philanthropic work. And um, Helen had this vision, though. She brought in Senator, late Senator John Numrat, uh, her brother, and eventually my late father, um, um, Homer Ashurian, to come together. She put together the nucleus of a wonderful team. And she said, and I remember she used to talk to my dad, says, Homer, what can we do to help Assyrians here? And that was the impetus, and that was the very soul of what this organization was about. So with that, our, a new chapter was born. Uh, activities started happening, eventually led to the wonderful Usher Banipal Library that we have um, through the cooperation of some of the um, founders of that, uh, of that library that was eventually housed at AUAF and then grew to what it is now, which is basically the largest single Assyrian library in the world anywhere. And we have um, many wonderful books, including some rare books. And uh, they will all be on display for you. So the organization was... Uh, had a new life, it started functioning, it started doing things, it started helping the Assyrian community here, but there was a dedication to our language, to our art, to our, to our, to our culture as well. And then eventually with the, with the, with the uh, unfolding of the community care program that became an economic engine for this organization as it is for ANCI, uh, you know, and, and the money that started flowing in there gave us new opportunities to do work on it. I joined the board some, um, uh, sometime in the uh, uh, 2000s, mid 2000s, uh, the invitation of uh, late Senator John Numerat, and I have witnessed firsthand all the work and dedication of people, the em employees here, the board members, who work and, and dedicate themselves to uh, helping a Syrian community. But we understand that that was our look in, uh, in the past, and we have been done, we've done a lot of work. Uh, we've invested in, the, um, uh, in, in student, in education, through hundreds of thousands of dollars that have been given out in, in the form of uh, scholarships, and, we, and, and humanitarian aid that have gone to Assyrians in Lebanon, to Assyrians in Syria, to Assyrians in northern Iraq. Our commitment is now growing with this new onset of a new idea, with what you see here behind me, the new logo, the new branding, which, uh, which my friend Rabel is gonna be um, uh, focusing on, tell you all about it. But, we, but there is a new spirit here, and that spirit is a spirit of growth, a spirit of strength, and a spirit that our, vi our vision, we act locally, but we want to have a global view. So act globally, but think globally. That's what we want to do. So we've expanded the mission of AUAF to provide help, education, and invest in our, in, in our future. Our future are these kids that you're going to see in a few moments. And that's why we have the um, uh, 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 Maestro Nebu J. Isabi School of Music here. That's why we have a wonderful fine arts program that's been directed by my brother uh, Joseph Badalpur. And these are all being provided to the Assyrian community uh, free of charge. Why? Because we want to invest in the future of our young generation, without whom our culture will die. Our language will be forgotten. And this is not what we want. And this is not what the Lord has mandated. That's why we have organizations such as AUAF, such as ANCI, that work day in, day in and day out in order to revitalize our community. And it starts by investing in the lives of our young ones and teaching them our art, teaching them our music, teaching them our language, teaching them the soul of what it means to be an Assyrian. And I am proud to be an Assyrian. I pray, I, I pray and I say to the Lord, Lord, of all of the people in the world that you could have made me, thank you that you made me an Assyrian, the very smallest people on earth, but yet the ones that have given the earth so much. And I am proud to be one. So with that, I would like to thank you again for being here. God bless you. And we're asking for your help and for your cooperation as we go hand in hand into the future. Thank you very much. Now I'd like to invite Rabel. Rabel, where are you? There you go. Speaking of future, this young man is one of those, is, is part of our future. It's been a pleasure 
for me to work in the cultural committee with Rabel, a wonderful, talented young man who has helped us redesign everything that you see here, from our logo to our colors, to, our, uh, to, to everything else that we do, to our website that's going to be, uh, that's been launched, that's launched and, and everything else. Rabel is going to tell you all about it. Yep. Rabel, it's been a Let's pleasure. Rabel, thank you, Rabel. I'm Appreciate looking forward that. to working thank with you. you for many likewise, years. Likewise, okay. likewise. Thank you. Thank you. We're, just, we're just getting started. So, Ana Halbeti Hamza Mansurit, Ina, you know, I'm going to do my presentation in, uh, in English because it's kind of technical and, and I want to take you through all the great work that we did here at AUAF. So, let's, let's begin. Uh, we're going to talk about vision and brand design. And so my role here at U.S., or I'm sorry, not U.S., my role here at AUAF is um, as a designer and also as a volunteer for the Fine Arts Program. So the Fine Arts Program here teaches kids from seven all the way to teenagers, and we're basically starting, uh, you know, early basic uh, drawing skills, painting, and that sort of thing. And so... You know, I was invited by Tigla Desavi about a year or so ago to come visit the center, and this is what I saw. I saw kids playing music, I saw kids painting, I saw some history on the walls, and I saw lots and lots of books. And I encourage you all to go check out the library back there. There's a lot of books to, 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 to look through. And so this, to me, was a new type of Assyrian experience. I had never seen anything like this here, you know, in Chicago. I've been living in Chicago since 1989. This is really something new for me. It was professional, it was forward thinking, and it was a dedicated uh, space for Assyrian culture and Assyrian thought. And so I quickly got started on defining a strategy, and this is a very important part in what I do as a designer. And so I quickly realized that, you know, we have a community, and within our community we have several different segments. We have young children, and we have elderly folks. And we want to develop programs, right, that cater to, the, to these segments that we have. And so we're connecting our programs to these segments. And this is just a sampling of some of the things that we do here at AUAF. We do music, we do art, we have a library, and we have our community care program. So I wanted to understand, you know, what do we do here at AUAF and why are we doing it? And this is all so that we can be community first. So if I was to sum up our vision for this place, it's to be community first, and that's, that's what we're working towards. So let's get into the branding aspect. You know, we're trying to visualize the Assyrian experience through design, right? I don't think that's ever done, been done before, and so I'm going to take you through some of the work that I did. Uh, a brand is a combination of names, words, sentences, symbols, or images that help distinguish organizations from others. And a logo identifies an organization in, in its simplest form. So th th these are some examples here of logos that I think all of you pretty much know, the, the, you know who these companies are. And I want to show, show you something very interesting here. These logos, when reduced in size, still are the logos that they're supposed to be, right? They don't lose their essence. And so these are some of the things, as a designer, I'm looking, I'm looking to and I'm, I'm exploring. Uh, so the work begins. So we defined our objective, what we wanted to do. We wanted to create a brand that reflects AUAF's expanded mission. We wanted to create a brand that is more marketable across multiple platforms, whether it's social, web, or uh, print. And we wanted to create a brand that connects the Assyrian community to AUAF. And we wanted to make sure that we kept in mind some design mandatory, some uh, restrictions for ourselves. So we wanted to retain the Assyrian text. We wanted to have the name of the organization in English, obviously, for uh, non-Assyrian speakers. And then we also wanted to develop sub-program logos so that our logos, our sub-programs, Makhleta, have their own uh, legs to kind of grow on. And so we established a project timeline from the project initiation, which was last September, all the way to launch, which is today, very happy to say. And we also looked at some American foundations to make sure that the work that I'm doing is relevant, right? Like I wanted to do my research. I wanted to go out there and see what it means to be a foundation. I also went and did some research on the CCP program. I really didn't have much um, understanding of what CCP is, and I went and kind of did some research on that as well. And so this is what we started with. This is our old branding. We had, we had a logo, and we had a very basic website. 
And so, you know, when I came here, I did a whole bunch of visits. You know, I saw some commonalities. You know, I saw this use of this daisy flower where I think the Assyrians were really the first uh, group that used this flower. And I looked through the old magazines in the library and I saw some interesting pattern and I quickly established, you know, some fonts for us to use. And then a color that I think you're all very familiar with, which is the color that you see in the, in the center uh, of our flag in the, uh, in the Assyrian star. And as a result, this was the logo that we came to, to design. And of course, this is with the help of the cultural committee and from the input from the board. Um, so from this logo, we also developed sub-programs for the community care program, for the Jeb, uh, Nebu J. Asabi music program for the fine arts program, for the studio gallery, and for Ashur Banipal Library. And as you can see, this look ties it back to the main logo. And by the way, we developed a whole bunch of marketing collateral for this um, program as well. You know, we designed stationery, we designed um, some brochures, we even designed some indoor signage, we did roll top banners, we did the whole thing, and also the website as well. So we redesigned the website so it looks more modern and also it's compatible with mobile devices. Whether you're on an iPhone or a Samsung, this, will, this brand will show up consistently across all platforms. So again, to recap this part, we had the old logo and this is what we uh, redesigned it to. And so I wanna talk about you know, a, a second part that, that we're um, very happy to introduce today actually. Nobody has seen this part, uh, you know, that, that we're going to be releasing. So we want to talk about a campaign and we want to talk about community engagement. We want to connect the Assyrian community to AUAF. And how are we going to do that? And I'll, and I'll run you through it real quick. So this is the at symbol. And I think a lot of you are familiar with what at is. We use it in email. It's basically a symbol used in social media to connect directly to another user. And so what happens when you combine at and alap? you get at AOAF. And so this is a new program that we're gonna be launching today, and this is basically a promotional program for uh, a lot of the things that we do here at AUAF. And here's what it looks like from a visual look and feel. We're gonna have poster campaign that we're gonna be launching to all the Assyrian-owned stores. At AOAF, we empower Assyrian students. At AUAF, we inspire the next generation of musicians. At AUAF, we inspire the next generation of Assyrian artists. And this kind of goes a step deeper. We've done roll top banners for this program. We've also done t-shirts, we've done pens, and we've done some really cool pins that uh, I think you, some of you will probably have access to a little bit later today. And so we're also gonna be handing out this What's New at, a at AUAF. A little bit later today when you guys uh, exit this hall, you'll be receiving this brochure and in the back it tells you all the new things that are occurring here at the foundation. And also, just to do a quick recap for you, what we've done is develop the main logo, we've come up with a vision statement about being community first, and we've also developed a campaign to connect the community to, ed to AUAF. And so this last part, is a video that we're gonna show you to kind of put in some testimonials and show you how everything is kind of coming to life for us here uh, at the foundation. So, how to be Marawa, thank you. The Assyrian Universal Alliance Foundation is a nonprofit organization based in Lincolnwood, Illinois whose roots date back to the 70s. It was established as a charitable organization with a mandate to aid thousands of Assyrian refugees who had resettled into the United States in the aftermath of the armed conflict in northern Iraq. In the mid-80s, the organization expanded its mission under the leadership of Assyrian philanthropist Helen Shorten. Helen's love for her Assyrian heritage was matched by her commitment to serving her people. Together with her brother, State Senator John Nimrud, she led AUAF in a new direction. They partnered with the Honorable Homer Ashurian, a beloved Assyrian scholar and advocate who became a central part of the organization moving forward. Over the years, AUAF has remained committed to providing humanitarian aid to Assyrians in the Middle East and investing in educational and cultural initiatives, as well as its overall goal to preserve the Assyrian heritage in diaspora. The Assyrian Universal Alliance Foundation is a nonprofit organization inspired by Assyrian heritage 
serving as a bridge between traditions and generations to build a stronger, more connected community. At AUAF, we believe in promoting positive change through social service, art, education, and humanitarian initiatives. At AUAF, we are committed to the well-being of our community. Our community care program has serviced the greater community for many years and is widely recognized as a leading provider for in-home quality care for seniors and other adults who need help with the activities of daily living. Our goal through this program is to enrich the lives of our clients as we enable them to maintain the highest possible level of independent living in their own homes. Through our community care program, we've also been able to provide employment to thousands of Assyrians across Illinois. At AUAF, we are committed to preserving Assyrian heritage and history. The Ashurbanipal Library is home to the largest and most extensive collection of Assyrian texts in the world. Our collection includes publications in Assyrian, English, Arabic, as well as other world languages. Named in honor of the Assyrian king Ashurbanipal, the library was founded in the 1980s by a group of Assyrian students in Chicago who wanted to collect as many important Assyrian texts as possible to ensure their preservation. The project gained the support of the Assyrian Universal Alliance Foundation, which gave the initiative a home. It has since grown and expanded to include thousands of publications either about Assyrians or by Assyrian authors, including incredibly rare texts more than a century old. At AUAF, we feel that education and engagement in the musical arts are a vital part of the development of each individual. Music is the part of the cultural heritage of every human being, serving as a common thread for people around the world. The Nebuje Isabi Music Program is an intensive program intended to train students in their instrument of study. Our program offers both private and group lessons in piano, violin, cello, clarinet, flute, and guitar. We also offer voice lessons. Our goal is to identify Assyrian Americans with exceptional talents at an early age and enable them to engage their talents to become effective cultural leaders. We strive to empower Assyrian students and provide them with the tools they need to excel in pursuing artistic studies and careers. At AUAF, we recognize the intrinsic value of art and the many ways it can illuminate our inner lives and enrich our world. We also understand the resulting impact art has on a wider scale and seek to provide opportunities for Assyrian children to experience and embrace the arts. The AUAF Fine Arts Program is designed to help foster an Assyrian-American community that is rich with social and intellectual diversity. Our programs are structured to give our students an intensive professional education in his or her artistic craft and to prepare each student with a solid foundation in the arts. Our courses include the practice of various mediums. Our goal is to identify Assyrian Americans with exceptional talents at an early age and enable them to engage their talents to become effective cultural leaders. At AUAF, we believe education changes lives and communities. All students deserve the support they need to ensure that they thrive in school and beyond. We aim to help young Assyrians realize their academic potential and empower them with the knowledge and resources to complete a higher education, with the hope that they will then mentor and serve as role models for generations to come. The Assyrian community historically has had limited access to equal education in their native countries, and as such increasingly recognize its importance. AUAF strives to make college education a top priority for every Assyrian family in the country, inspiring the community to advance that goal one generation at a time. AUAF values education and the role it plays in helping young Assyrians build a better future for themselves and their community. As the nation's largest not-for-profit organization supporting Assyrian American higher education, we have awarded more than a million dollars in scholarships over the years. We continue to fund modern Assyrian studies at Cambridge University and proudly support Assyrian schools in northern Iraq. Locally, our tutoring program is designed to help struggling Assyrian students work towards academic success. At AUAF, we believe that all people have the right to a good quality of life, one that is lived with dignity and without fear. The Middle East has been plagued with violence over the past decade, leaving many Assyrians living in dire conditions. We are committed to providing financial assistance to support the humanitarian needs of the Assyrian people in our ancestral homeland. We have developed the capacity to respond to unexpected crises that impact our community abroad. Over the years, we have provided support in the form of humanitarian aid including medicines and supplies, and programs that promote reconstruction and economic development. At AUAF, we believe that we are stronger together. A sense of community is vital for any group or organization to survive. It brings a sense of identity and belonging, but also pride. Open communication and networking are key ingredients in fostering a sense of connection among citizens. Community involves joining together to work on shared issues, celebrate, 
listen, problem solve, and make decisions. We believe that community is not built by numbers, but by connections. We feel that through our various programs and initiatives, we will build a stronger local network of Assyrian Americans. We feel that both within and outside of our community, the powerful presence of many community members banded together for a common purpose can help advance us as a whole. At AUAF, we are building the next generation of Assyrians. Hi, my name is Leora Ashorian. I have a son who is in the music program. He's uh, playing piano uh, with Rasan. And uh, we've been here for almost about two years since the beginning. And um, it's been uh, a real blessing uh, for, the, for the kids. Um, we have great teachers here. Um, they're amazing at teaching the kids and being really being serious about the program and about the kids learning. Uh, you can really tell that they care and um, they want the kids to learn. Um, and I'm very grateful to Tiglot who's founded this uh, program and uh, to the amazing teachers who are here uh, willing to come in and teach the kids. Um, it's a really great program and um, we're very grateful. The one thing about Andrew is that um, I never knew he had such passion for piano. Um, ever, ever since we started coming here, he's become um, in, in love with piano. He plays piano at home all the time. He brings up notes from school or finds them on YouTube and starts playing them at home. And he's become so focused and so passionate about music and that has helped him become focused, I believe, in other areas as well. Khadutela Qadi and Raba, the Kane, um AUAF music program. Raba la Iqara Qadi and Qadnun and Bnatan, Dina Bukraya Biliapa, Guda music program. Itlan hi we got Hamasha aha program as a Lakama, U Alamantem and AUAF. Bruni Rabele itle nisiana hadia after this music program, Budaila awe focus, Bukrayale notes at the same time, do levadu transfer gumadrasa, good de music, dile sharoe gumadrasa. So at this level, Raile advance u iwech. Mara, thank you, Ka AUAF. Dison Makroyo Ayala. Ana ide shimi Rafik Ishaya. Ekamatli tiant minta. من دبراند و مالپانت ایوه که تلخ را و زمان بیارش نگه چلی یه سوژ دیان و یه سوژ دی چه تیتروش بیانه و شبتان لخه که میوزیک و آرد و یه لخه دان را و سپای امپکت لاله جورتا که خمدید بلیاب نلخه شو به دانه تلکیل بنیاند که لیل لازم کته را و نیان بلیاب نباز میوزیک و را بید لخه تلوند رابر ریشای و این کم دیان معلوم نکاته. و هر نخزینا های جبرونی برایتی رامنتیان نه هایور لکاته جدند میدیان که اتفاقا خیلیه جدیسه. و هایور لکاته که ترام میدیان خیلی نودی به میوزیک. و هر اتفاق شوبت میدیان خیلی نگه داری سنجش لیل و داره آرت. دنبال دانم میتونه میدیان بهت به جراش نیه. تخمون نخام دی جاشی. و اتله ایل رابر این که تا که اتفاق پروگرام میتونه جایی. Okay. Hi, my name is Belle Isho, and um, I am the mother of six children. Five of them are currently a part of the programs here, which is a wonderful opportunity for our family. Um, one of my daughters right now is in the art program, which I want to start with because maybe that is a little bit of a, a lesser told story, but um, we have a nine-year-old named Nahrin, and she is a artist at heart, and um, we are just thrilled that she's able to come every Saturday and to experience our, uh, learn new techniques in art, and then also get to interact with other children her age um, that are also doing art and love it. So we really appreciate that art program because this is her, her love language, as we say in English. <laughs> she expresses herself through art. So we, I just want to say that we are thrilled that they're able to participate. We thank God for this opportunity because we're not for this, um, <clears throat> excuse me, for the music program here. Um, most of my children would not be able to take private lessons, obviously. 
So coming from a larger family, this is a tremendous opportunity for them. We thank the Assyrian community because it's also a bridge for them to understand that the Assyrian, the Assyrian community is behind um, supporting the arts. Arts are another form of language, whether it's the visual arts, like the art classes here, or the music program. This is a way for people to express themselves as they've done in history, but also currently. Um, it's like a language that they can speak from their heart, they can speak some, express themselves in ways that um, would not be possible just with language alone. So we're, we really appreciate this opportunity. Shamila uh, Bassam Oshana. اتلي تربنات وخبرونا وطلون تياتي لخا با ميوزيك كلاسز أه براتي قرطها اين اكشلي ليه مخيا ميوزيك لخا يا اين مخيا بسون ولخا هلا ليتن لسنز قبسون بس ياتي اقا ميوزيك ثيري كلاس أه وبراتي اربسر شنيلا اين مخيا بيس كلارنات وياتي اقا كلاس لخا وبروني قلتا اصرا شنيلا مخيا بيانو وهل هديا I wish I could do this program because it made it coming to Rava Sudan and it's not that by Al Sura, especially by Ali. Yali Mahi music in Madrasa, but Lachaji Ainan Liplu Hamdi has style Hina, her perspective Hina in music. So, who should Yari Hamzu Mood all about music? You have to give a hill and be here because I'm late on Lishan music. Wani, you have Zimi Ainan. خاليشانا خينا نامزومة، so it's been خمدي رابا مجد بوزيتيف قيالي، وو رابي رسم is something else. he's really a unique individual who he's honestly he's like a a beacon for the music music world especially خاص خاص وراي قيالي ديان، و لبس قيالي ضمن أورن جودي بيلدينج يخزنو أني على سورة شو أتمنى أتوش إنهم خاي بيانو it's really amazing خزتلو كما يطي ماخي رابا منو خطر بناتي ماخي ميوزيك بلا قرايه وراقه يطيلو كل ميوزيك بيسز من لبه او بروني بروني انا بل انا اربع شباتي من خاي ميوزيك بيانو و يعني تمجد اجوانت هل كميلي ويدا ادفانس ويدا انا اربع شباتي سو اتس بن خمدي رابا قازر فقاتي وبقى كلباتي At AUAF, we value the role we play in helping young Assyrians build a better future for themselves and their community. We continue to expand and diversify our programs, but we remain committed to providing the finest programs, events, and services to Assyrians in Illinois and around the world. It is now my great honor to introduce to you our board president, Mr. Tiglet Isabi, whose vision has led our organization down a new path. As an accomplished musician, Mr. Isabi also serves as our music director. Please join me in welcoming Mr. Isabi. Shalom alochun, Rabbi Kasha, Achoni Shiva Mandu, Dabran at NACI, Erchan Mugibe, Shena Tietun, Kabulochum of Shena, Anna Hemeshikitan and Lemson Oden competing Achoni Tiglat. ادن اتیال هم زمت و سپیچ شو هم زمت شو قنن قداون و میوزیک مخیت قدیش پشنا تیتون بطلب خب خالت اگری هم زمت انگلیس قد ارخن بارمیال هم زمتن I like to welcome everyone in this celebration is a special celebration for us a Syrian nation. There are so many people I like to thank, I must thank, and my advance apology, I'm sure I'm gonna forget some names. Starting with our clients in home care program, our employees, our office staff, uh, director of uh, home care program, Susan Bervari, our library director, Mr. Ninos Nirari, all the teachers, great teachers that we have here, art and music, I'd like to thank you all. You have done a wonderful job, especially 
one special individual, Mr. Rasen Bidyonan. We are trying to go to the next level and compete with the world, not locally. And I have no question in my mind we were going to get there. We are going to get there, absolutely. Uh, our children are talented. They need the support. We need your help, your support, and we will get there. So I am trying to be brief here and invite some student to play three short pieces for you, composed by our wonderful composer, Rasan Bidyonen, for these children. Please welcome the children from our school. Thank you.
It is our goal to identify Assyrian Americans with exceptional talents at an early age and enable them to engage their talents to become effective cultural leaders. We'd like to highlight our students who performed for you here this afternoon. Please join me in welcoming Anthony Temmo, Jenny Toya, Nina Newman, Jenna Oshana, Anna Maglaris, Bahra Khobir, Nineveh Ishu, and Taylor Oshana. Well done. This is an exciting time here at AUAF. As we move forward with our new vision, we felt it was appropriate to pay tribute to those who were instrumental to the foundation and the growth of AUAF. I'd like to ask our board president, Tiglet Isabi, and our fine arts director, Joseph Badalpur, to join me on stage. We are proud today to honor two past presidents of the Assyrian Universal Alliance Foundation, the late Helen James Schwarten and the Honorable Homer Ashurian. Helen James Shorten fled Iran with her mother and two siblings during the Assyrian Genocide in 1917. She later found herself resettling in America, where she would slowly rebuild her life. Though she would become incredibly wealthy, Helen never forgot her roots. A philanthropist devoted to her community, she spent much of her life working with the Assyrian immigrants and students. Her motivation to help fellow immigrants stemmed from her own experience, as well as her deep religious faith. She aimed to assist those in the, community who, in the community who had been persecuted and were now struggling to start a new life. For example, she generously aided many Assyrians struggling to make ends meet by paying their bills for them and would take new immigrants around Chicago to get to know the city. Helen became an integral part of the Assyrian Universal Alliance Foundation, supporting the creation of the Ashurbanipal Library and initiating various educational programs, including AUAF's scholarship fund. She served as AUAF's president for many years, lending both her time and financial support to ensure its success, leaving an impact on the organization and a generation of Assyrians. She passed away in 1999. We are honored to have with us today members of Helen's family, and at this point would like to invite them onto the stage for her portraits unveiling. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be here. Today with you. With me, uh, 
on my left is Helga Schwarten and Tom Schwarten. My wife Jeannie was here, but with 14 grandchildren living within a mile of our house, she had to leave a few minutes ago to go pick one of them up. And so uh, I'm sorry she can't be here to see this, but I'll get her back so she will. You heard a little bit about my mother leaving Iran, coming here, and there was no AUAF. There were friends, her church, and other family members, all helping each other and guiding each other in the principles of good stewardship, good life, and family. I'm sorry our other family members can't be here, but with all these grandchildren and things going on, sports and so forth, um, you, you, I think you know, you know what happens in that. But years ago, when mom came here, and we would listen to her and my dad tell stories of their immigration and their beginning of a life in their new country, their new home, America, United States of America. I think my mother and father never forgot from whence they came. And my mom would tell us, you know, everybody was so helpful to us. They gave us their hand, they gave us their love, they gave us their time, friendship. <laughs> Excuse me. And she wanted to uh, do something that would help those who were fleeing from a war-torn country in later years. And she never forgot what she went through. In fact, in, in when she turned 80, she took the entire family to New York to visit Ellis Island and showed us what she went through and how they separated her from her mother and it's because she had a cold and they put a white check on her jacket, sent her downstairs, not knowing that she'd ever see her mother again. And when she got down there, about 10 years old, the lady there said, what's wrong? My mother told her, and she said, come here. She took her jacket, turned it inside out, and sent her back upstairs to her mother. So that was one thing that, that we never forgot. And a lot rubs off at the dining room table. You hear stories, you, you, you know what they went through. But I think the overriding thing that my mother wanted to do was to help those coming to this country now and then to experience the love, the affection, and the opportunities that were given to her and dad, my dad, and hopefully get these people started and to assimilate into the wonderful country of America that they love so much. And I would be remiss if I didn't say that my dad died in 1958 at age 54. Several years later, she, mom married John Schwarten. And I can tell you standing here with Tom and Helga behind me that John was right there with mom the entire way during her volunteer, volunteer work, her dedication, and her generosity to the AUAF, and I cannot tell you what that means to us. So thank you very much. It's a delight to be here, and uh, may God bless you all. And as I used to hear all the time, we're all cousins, right, cousin? <laughs> Thank you. The late Homer Ashurian was born and raised in Urmia, Iran. 
He graduated from the University of Tehran with a master's degree in archaeology and Assyriology. In 1958, he became a curator for the National Museum of Iran. In 1975, Homer Ashurian was elected to serve as a member of the Iranian parliament, giving a voice to the Assyrian people. He served honorably for four years. He ultimately found himself resettling in the United States with his wife, Susie, and his two sons. Though far from home, distance did little to stop his efforts to secure a better future for his people, both in the homeland and in the diaspora. He joined the AUAF Board of Directors in 1987. Those who knew and worked with him here recall his total commitment to the organization's mission and to the community. Ashurian dedicated his broad intellect and his boundless energy to a singular cause, Assyrians. He had a forceful commitment to improving the lives of Assyrians in the homeland, as well as, as helping Assyrians in the United States through the challenges they faced with resettlement. A central part of AUAF for nearly 30 years, he retired in 2015. And though he passed away last year, his legacy lives on, both in our mission at the AUAF and in the hearts of all the people who had the pleasure of working with him. Please join me in welcoming members of the Ashurian family to the stage for his portraits unveiling. On behalf of the entire family, my mom Susie and my brother Ramin, I would like to thank you all for, uh, for this honor. I would like to thank my brother Joseph and Ticklet. Oh, I know we're instrumental in this. Uh, it means a lot. As I was seeing all of this and as I've been a part of the uh, cultural committee putting all of this together, it's come to hit me that this was my dad's dream. And oftentimes we talk with Ticklet and with Joseph, and they say, you know what? Even though Homer is not personally here, but we know that from, the, from above, he's looking at all of this with approval because this was his dream. His dream was to give a legacy, a lasting legacy to the Assyrian community, something that would ensure that the name Assyrian and the culture of Assyrians will survive beyond this generation. And I cannot even stop there. So I just want to let you know that this was his dream. He was a dedicated person, above and beyond everything. He had two great loves. Love number one was his Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, whom he, he dedicated his life to his work. And he was a principal person behind translation of the Assyrian, uh, working with ABT, translating the, Assy the uh, scripture in the modern Assyrian language. Those books are available here. So I, I urge you to pick one up. If not, come to our church. 3300 West Brimar Avenue, we'll give you one. But this was his life work. Love number two was his people, was his nation. When he used to tell me stories from when I was small, I remember he used to read me the book Gilgamesh when I was, when I was only seven years old. And I learned all of that. And he used to tell me, Qatina Qatature. So I grew up with Gilgamesh. I grew up with Qatina. The vein... In, in, in the, the blood in my veins and in his veins uh, comes from Homer's work and the love of Assyrian and everything that is Assyria and Assyrians was pumped into our being by this great man. I say that not because he's my father, but he indeed was a great person for the Assyrian people, for the Assyrian nation. His loss we will always feel, but his legacy will continue through the work of young men like this and like that, and, and, and other members of our beloved AUAF board of directors. I would like to thank every single one of them. I see Helen there, Helen Badawi, and I know Ed Yonan is over here, and uh, who else is here? 
<laughs> yeah, Billy Mendu is here. I would like to thank every one of you guys because I know how much you loved Homer and I know how much you believed in what he's doing and that's why you're here working with us and making all of this possible. So I would like to thank you again on behalf of my brother and my mom for all of this. And let me say just a quick little word. I add to what you said about Helen. Helen was a great woman. She's the one that fell in love with Homer and Homer fell in love with her. It was like love at first sight. You know, and it's like to this day in our household, we talk about Helen. Everything that she did for us personally and everything that we know she did for these people. And I know that even Helen is looking from above right now and is indeed saying, I am proud of what you've done in my name and for the sake of the Assyrians. Here are two people who their heart beat for Assyrians. They loved you. They loved our community. They loved our language. They loved our culture. So let's work together so people like that who work would not go to in vain. Let us give something to the next generation. Let us not be the generation where this nation dies because it will never die. This nation will live forever because the Lord has promised it and because we have each other. As long as we have each other's back, we will live. So come and support us, support other Assyrian organizations like ANCI, whose president is here, Mr. Shiva Mendo. I would like to thank them for everything they do for Assyrians. We do a lot together, and we're going to do a lot more. So keep us in prayer. Pray for us that the legacy of Helen Schwarten and Homer Ashurian shall live forever, as Assyria shall live forever. Thank you. We would also like to take the opportunity to highlight the two incredible artists for their work on these two portraits. The portrait of Helen James Shorten was completed by Detroit-based Assyrian artist Rennie Steffen, and the portrait of uh, Rabbi Homer Ashurian was done by local Assyrian artist Mr. John Malik. I'd like to ask Mr. Rennie Steffen and Mr. John Malik to please stand. You can see more of their work in our studio gallery today. And as you leave the Nineveh Hall, you will receive a flyer uh, from one of our volunteers that details all of the new things here at AUAF. We've spent a considerable amount of time over the past couple of years reflecting on our goals and are committed to raising new standards to accelerate the growth of our organization and the betterment of our community. Through our new facility, we've created an environment that celebrates the beauty of Assyrian history and heritage, and through our various programs, we've created the opportunity for Assyrians to connect with their past, their culture, and each other. Basim et Raba, thank you all for being here. We now proudly invite you to learn more about our mission and our new vision as you tour our revitalized space. Thank you. Thank you. 